Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our 2021 County of Grand Prairie Municipal Election Forum. My name is Larry Gibson, and I'm the chair of the Grand Prairie and District Chamber of Commerce. I will also be the moderator for this event. We acknowledge the Treaty 8 territory, the ancestral and traditional territory of the Cree, Dene, as well as the Métis. We acknowledge the many First Nations, Métis and Inuit, whose footsteps have marked these lands for generations. We recognize the land as an act of reconciliation and gratitude to those whose territory we reside on or are visiting. And thanks for taking an interest in the leadership of your county, government, and taking the time to be here today. Appreciate it. Uh, the Grand Prairie and District Chamber of Commerce represents nearly 1,200 businesses in this region, including a number in the county of Grand Prairie. We work alongside those members, special interest groups, and all three levels of government to ensure the voice of business and the matters affecting them is heard and considered. We will hear the candidates' thoughts on issues facing our region in helping us get ready for Election Day on October 18th. The forum will begin with an introduction of candidates, a one-minute opening from each followed by a question period. Candidates will have 30-second warning with a yellow card, then a red card signaling time is up. We will repeat the format for all el eligible divisions. Be before we start hearing from your candidates, let's review the rules for this forum. Answers to questions will be limited to 45 seconds in order to maximize the number of questions that can be fielded in the time allotted. Candidates uh, will be given a 15 second warning yellow card and a red card at the end of their allotted time. Candidates will each have an opportunity after a question period for a one minute closing statement to respond to issues that have been presented through the forum and or summarize their platform. Again, a 30 second warning with a yellow card and then red card signaling time is up. The moderator will have final jurisdiction in all matters. That's me. Introducing your candidates for division two in alphabetical order, Kurt Balderson, Darcy Karbaszewski, and uh, Thomas Tharp. Welcome and thank you for joining us this evening. And just uh, just want to make mention that uh, in Division Two, uh, Talbot Rycroft was unavailable to uh, join us here this evening. And now we'll ask uh, our candidates for some uh, the one-minute opening remarks. And uh, the order was uh, was determined through a random draw prior just moments ago. And uh, well, first opening remarks we're going to hear from Darcy Karbaszewski. Go ahead, Darcy. Hello, uh, my name is Darcy Karbaszewski. I'm running for the County Council and the. It, for Division Two in the County of Grand Prairie. I'm born and raised in Alberta. I've lived all around the province and for the last 15 years, uh, my wife, my son, and my, my wife and my two sons have called Grand Prairie home. I have over 40 years experience working as a laborer, a government worker, and as a, in private business and as a small business owner. I've gained experience with provincial boards, government regulations, policy and procedure at the provincial and municipal levels. The knowledge and skill I've acquired by these experiences will be invaluable as a county councillor. I've been volunteering for 30 years. Since moving to the region, I've been involved in the community by coaching minor hockey from the U8 to U17 levels. I've also coached on the coaching staff of the Sexsmith Vipers Junior B Club. And I, also, and I currently sit on the assessment review board in the county of Grand Prairie. I will be honored to represent you. Thank you, Darcy. And now our second candidate we'll hear from is Thomas Tharp. Hello, Thomas? my name is Thomas Tharp and I would like the opportunity to serve on council for division two. Raised on a farm gives me the ability to understand the concerns of farmers. Running my own consulting business for 27 years has given me skills and knowledge about road building and road maintenance. Working as a team member with all levels of government to obtain land for drilling purposes. Negotiating with landowners and listening to people's concerns and solving problems in a fair and sensible manner. These skills will, be, will enable me to be an effective negotiator for you on council. I live in Westlake Village with my wife of 40 years and we love the community. I feel that I have something to offer and am asking for your vote on October 18th. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. And uh, lastly, we'll have Kurt Alderson. Kurt, take it away. 
Hi everyone, my name is Kurt Balderson. I'm a fourth generation farmer. And I've lived on a farm just north of Claremont my whole life and raised three kids there with Marcy, my wonderful wife of 36 years. I also served as councillor of this division from 2004 to seven and feel that it's time for me to run again. I think that we're at a defining moment in our county's history. We're facing ever increasing crime rates, lower quality of life standards and an economy that's putting a massive strain on the working class. One of the premises of my campaign is that I think we can't begin to solve these problems till we come together as a community and push forward for things we believe in. I value integrity, honesty, and availability. If I'm elected as your councillor, my personal promise is this, I'll do everything in my power to help create the future our division deserves. You will be welcome to contact me at any time. Your voice will be valued and heard. Thank you. Thank you, Kurt. All right, well, we'll dive right into question period. Uh, I'm going to start in alphabetical order and then we'll rotate the questions through uh, uh, to give everybody a chance to lead with the different questions. But Kurt, this one will be directed at you and the first question up and remember you have 45 seconds on questions and the same with the yellow and the, and the red uh, tags there. The first question directed to you is, if elected, how would you propose county residents be made aware of the efforts by local leaders to improve services on an ongoing basis and allow for public participation and feedback? Well, I think the biggest thing is uh, to always be available to people. I know I've heard times in the past where people have tried to get a hold of their counselors and they're not accessible or they don't return calls. I know when I was on last time, that was my number one priority is to answer every call, no matter whether it's good or bad, and then to reach out to the different groups and stay in constant communication so they know what's going on and they're educated on everything that's happening in our area. So. I think the, the main thing is just being available and, uh, and being open and honest with people. Thank you, Kurt. Darcy, same question uh, directed Could at you. you repeat it, please? Oh, certainly. Uh, Darcy, if elected, how would you propose uh, county residents be made uh, better aware of the efforts by local leaders to improve services on an ongoing basis and allow for public participation and feedback? Well, I think uh, in, the, in the day of uh, information age that, that we're in, with both electronically, um, it's important that, that we make sure that all our residents and, and taxpayers and ratepayers are, are aware of, of all the issues that are coming forward in, in, within the county. Um, one way I'll do it is that every six months I'll be holding a town hall, hall meeting. Uh, I think face-to-face -face interaction is probably the most uh, effective and that... Um, it's important that we get out and we talk to the people in, in our divisions directly and let them know what those issues are. And, and that way you can gain some uh, measure as to what their feeling is toward those, the issues that are coming forward. Thanks. Thank you, Darcy. Uh, same question directed to you, Thomas. Do you want me to repeat it or? No, that's fine. You're good? Uh, okay. In all the years in private business, I found what worked very well for me is uh, my phone is always on, and I've answered phone calls at 2 o'clock in the morning. Not to say that I'm going to do that here, but uh, is, is deal with them as they arise, and uh, the people get an answer immediately, and it all works. seems to work better. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Thomas. <clears throat> And I just want to take the moment to thank uh, the individuals who pre-submitted questions for tonight's event as well. So thank you to everyone for that. Okay, we're going to start this round with Darcy. Uh, Public-private partnerships uh, provide an opportunity to build needed infrastructure while allowing the private sector to help get the best deal possible. If elected, are you in favor of working with elected colleagues to engage the private sector to participate in building major infrastructure in our region? Um, absolutely. I think uh, public, public private partnerships are, will be of great benefit to the County of Grand Prairie, especially in, uh, in times of uh, uncertain revenue sources. Um, it will help us to, to maximize our revenue dollars and uh, provide greater amount of services to the county's residents, um, whether that's recreational facilities, whether that's parks, trails, uh, or just access to, to uh, more businesses right in their local areas. Thank you, Darcy. Thomas. Absolutely. I agree 100% with that, and I 
in order to get anything done, we have to work with all councillors and work with the idea of what's the best for the county as a whole, not just for one particular division. Thank you. Thank you. Kurt. Yeah, I would agree. I think, uh, you know, partnerships are, are critical, intermunicipal business, and uh, any source we can tap into that will help the community as a whole. I think especially recreation, whether it's sponsorship of buildings or certain projects, I think whatever we can do to help the community, that's what we have to be open and uh, be willing to do. Thanks. Thank you, Thomas. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Kurt. <laughs> Have my list backwards here. Uh, we're going to start with Thomas on this question. I knew there was a Thomas in there somewhere. Uh, so, uh, Thomas, uh, regional planning brings together multiple community, multiple communities and areas to find projects that improve our region. How would you propose to work with other municipalities, including the city, to prioritize and pursue projects that are focused on improving economic outcomes for our regions? I think with uh, with that, it, it's the same as working with your other councillors. You have to have a, a working relationship with other municipalities and work what's what works best for for everybody involved. Thank you. Thank you, Kurt. Yeah, I certainly think cooperation with the other areas. Uh, you know, anywhere within Alberta and certainly neighboring municipalities. It's, it's really critical because there may be something that happens in Greenview that people from our area benefit of and vice versa, same as city and uh, county. So yeah, I certainly think uh, that's something I saw when I was on council from 04 to 07 was municipalities not necessarily working together. And I think, I think we have to always put the good of the whole region ahead of individual needs. So I think it is very critical. Thanks. Thank you, Kurt. And uh, Darcy. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the county, I think, uh, to this point has uh, started their intermunicipal um, interactions and they are making progress, but obviously there's a lot more work to be done. Uh, I think we have a great opportunity uh, during this election with the large turnover of county councillors in, in both the county and possibly in the city and other municipalities in the area uh, to create a new uh, relationship and maybe bond, build better bonds between all of the municipalities uh, so that we can create a great framework for this whole region. Um, this, this region has to act all as a, as a unit. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Darcy. Okay, well, back to the top. We'll start with Kurt on this question. Uh, if elected, how would you strive to ensure government transparency in the decisions made by County Council? Well, I think that's pretty easy as far as it has to start with individual councillors. And I mean, that's one thing I think is one of my main strengths is people that know me know I am completely honest. And like I say, you may know, not always hear what you want to hear, but if you come to me with a question, I'm going to be honest. And I think that has to be the whole council. So uh, yeah, transparency, I think that's what everybody looks for because it's easy to give an answer that make people happy, but you have to be honest with people. So yeah, I think open and honest transparency is the way to go. Thank you, Kurt. Darcy. Absolutely, I agree with Kurt. Um, you have to be a, an open and honest person and hopefully um, people who know me know that I'm honest to a fault uh, and it, at times it's gotten me in trouble, but um, absolutely um, making sure that, that the ratepayers are well aware of, of everything that's going on in the county is, is of utmost important, importance to me. I, I uh, have in the past, uh, being living here for 15 years, uh, not been aware of some of the issues that have come forward, and yet they affected me on a daily basis. Um, so I, I, I feel it's very important to make sure that there's transparency. Thank you, Darcy. And Thomas. Yes, transparency is a, a topic for conversation in all political parties, and uh, I think we need more of it. Uh, my phone is, is on 24-7, as I've said before, and uh, I think it is very important to communicate with the people that I've elected you and sent you, trusted you to make decisions for them. So, thank you. Thank you, Thomas. We'll start this round with Darcy. Uh, if elected, what would you propose to improve uh, 
uh, enforcement of crime in rural areas? Um, I have a little bit of a background in law enforcement, and uh, so with um, with that, improving the uh, response times is, is critical, I think, uh, whether that means posting satellite offices without, throughout the county that will allow the RCMP to respond a little bit better, or if whether it's uh, county enforcement. Um, I think those are usually the, the points that most residents have a problem with, is that we don't get a response quick enough. Um, and if we can get those response times down, maybe we can uh, lower the crime rates. Thank you, Darcy. Thank you. Thomas? I think it's uh, a topic that we should discuss more on council is to support Rural Crime Watch more, uh, just to get the word out faster to the RCMP and uh, possibly make a little bit more arrests than what have been happening lately. So, thank you. Thank you, Thomas. And Kurt. This is something we deal with when, with an ongoing basis in my area, and I think the one way we can really make an impact is the community has to be together again. I think people don't interact. Uh, we're not close to our neighbours like we used to be. I think we should have a pod of like 20 people and we should have group texts and the minute we see something going on that's suspicious in our area we send out a text and everyone in our area knows exactly what's going on because we have to be the eyes and the ears for the police we can't have a policeman on every corner so i think it's going to come down to the people working together and have that sense of community again and i think that's the only way we're going to get the crime down because we will never be able to hire enough officers to to be there every time something happens thank you thank you kurt uh, okay, this is going to be our, our last round of questions. Uh, start this one off with Thomas. Uh, how would you improve and promote Indigenous relationships in the area? Communicate better with them uh, and work closer, closer with uh, the leaders of each Indigenous people. Uh, Communication is, is the answer. And thank you. <laughs> thank you, Thomas. Uh, Kurt. Yeah, I think, you know, getting back to the open, honest, and transparency, I think you would have to know, you know, what their needs are, what their concerns are. I've never been in that situation, the things they have to deal with, so we'd have to sit at the table face-to-face -face because until you've sat in somebody's... Uh, or walk some in somebody's shoes. It's hard to know what they're going through. So, I would welcome the opportunity to sit down with them, and uh, you know, share, and basically understand where they're coming from and what their needs are. Because for us to sit and think we have the answers now, I certainly wouldn't have. But uh, certainly be open to sitting down and and finding out what those are and working together to make things better. Thank you, Kurt. And last, Darcy. Uh, yeah, I think absolutely. Uh, the, the culture that that uh, that the indigenous people bring forward is is uh, very important to our society and our community. Um, sometimes uh, we forget that that uh, culture is a, is the biggest part of being in a community. Um, the in, being, the inclusiveness that we need to provide to the uh, indigenous population in the area. Is, is absolutely important. And, and whether that's um, bringing them on a regular basis to council or just educating the people in the area of the past and, and, what, and the things that they've gone through uh, will greatly help to, uh, to bridge that gap. Thank you. Thank you, Darcy. Okay, that uh, concludes our question period. Uh, we'll now open it up for the closing remarks. And just a reminder that you have the one minute and the, the yellow and the red tags for the, the closing statements as well. Uh, now this was also a random draw, so the order on closing is going to be just about exactly like the alphabetical order. Well, it is. Uh, we're going to start with Kurt. First of all, I'd just like to thank everyone who arranged this discussion and everyone who's tuned in to listen. Everyone wants change, but with your vote, you have the power to make change happen. No matter who you are, your ballot is worth one vote. You have my personal assurance that if I'm elected as your councillor, you'll be represented by someone who cares not only for his own future, but for yours. My ancestors picked up their lives and moved here from Wales and Norway 
1912 and 1916 to build a new future for themselves and their families. Now it's been our family home for over 100 years. I love this community and everything that it stands for. As a councillor, you can trust that you will be my first priority, no questions asked. I'm not running for council so that I can bring my personal agenda to the table. I just want to do my best to help build the safe and prosperous future that I know we can secure, as long as we take the right steps today. Thank you. Thank you, Kurt. Darcy? Uh, thank you. Uh, I would just want to say thank you to the Chamber of Commerce and, and to all the viewers watching today. Uh, we've been through a difficult and challenging time over the last couple of years. I'm looking forward to a new era with positivity, both socially and economically. It's important to advocate at the appropriate levels of government so that we can be invited to the table and, that, and the issues that matter to us will be heard. I will work to strengthen our partnerships within the city and other municipalities so that we can create a strong unified plan for a vibrant and prosperous region. I think it's imperative for your representative to be informed and engaged with the people that they speak for at the county level. Getting involved requires 100% commitment and I am ready and able to be the best choice for Division II Councillor. I will work for you. Vote for Darcy Karbyshowski. Thank you. Thank you, Darcy and Thomas. I too would like to thank the Chamber of Commerce for putting this on and thank everybody for watching. I will bring a common sense approach to the County Council. I have lived in the county for 21 years and would like to be a part of the decision making process. I believe we need a better working relationship with our neighboring towns and cities and will strive to accomplish this. While it is nice to build something new, we must work hard to maintain the infrastructure already in place. On October 18th, I'm asking for you to vote Thomas Tharp for council. Vote for common sense approach. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. And, and thank you to Kurt Balderson, Darcy Karpaszewski, and Thomas Tharp. Uh, appreciate you coming out tonight and uh, expressing your views. And all the best on October 18th. Thank you for coming. Thank you. I just want to say, gentlemen, I think um, whoever wins is going to, we're going to be well represented in our, our division. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you guys too. Thanks. Thanks. Well, good evening. Introducing our candidates for Division 4 in alphabetical order um, Marissa Heitland, uh, who was unable to make it here this evening, uh, Calvin Maple, and Steve Zimmerman. Thank you guys for coming here tonight and I uh, appreciate you uh, putting your names forward and representing the county. Uh, we're going to start with uh, opening remarks. Uh, you have one minute for your opening remarks and uh, we made a random draw here just minutes ago before you arrived to see who would go first and uh, the opening is uh, we're going to start with Calvin. Calvin you have one minute to give your opening statement. All right well I'm Calvin Maple. I'm running for uh, Division 4 in the county uh, because I'd like to get into the county, get my uh, views heard, and uh, my neighbors. You know, we like to go out and uh, talk about what's going on in the county. We like to talk about our infrastructure. That's uh, the biggest thing I'm hearing from most people. Uh, things like uh, roads and internet, etc. That's why we're here, rather than being able to uh, be on the internet and do a Zoom like we were originally planned, because our internet service is poor. So that's one of the primary things I would like to address in the county and see what we can't do that way. Um, other than that, I'm just gonna be representing my neighbors. And uh, that's about it for me. <laughs> Thank you, Calvin. Uh, Steve. Hi, I'm Steve Zimmerman. I am running for council for Division Four. Uh, I was raised in Grand Prairie and I'm 61 years old, if that means anything to anybody. And uh, I'm six generations in the, in the uh, county of Grand Prairie. Um, we home, uh, my folks homesteaded in Beaver Lodge and in uh, Good Fair. Um, I, my, uh, I, I'm the I'm same idea as, as Calvin was. Um, I'm trying to uh, do something with high-speed internet and, and improving cell service. Uh, maintain and improve roads, accessible resources for county residents to curb rural crime, sustainable fiscal tax assessment, accountable fiscal spending, and number one, listen to and follow up with residents. 
Good. Thank you, Steve. All right. Well, with that, we'll jump right into questions. Uh, we're going to start in the in alphabetical order, so we're going to start with uh, with Calvin on the questions. And the first question directed to you is, uh, if elected, how would you uh, propose better engaging residents of the county in the formal budget process, as well as increased public consultation for other decisions made by council? Well, I think that we need to uh, have not only social media, which uh, seems to be the go-to nowadays, everybody's either on Facebook or Instagram, et cetera, but there's a lot of us out there that aren't. So it would be nice to be able to get together with a, a town hall for important things like the budget, what's going on that way, uh, let our neighbours actually get out there and ask the questions, say what they need to get done, and then we can set up forward as a committee and uh, say, yeah, this is how we're going to do it. As far as uh, social media goes, it's a matter of knowing where to go. So when we go and people look on the county, it's finding the links and going into the different uh, areas. There's guys like me that have a hard time with that, and I'm sure that uh, there's a lot of us that uh, would like to just get there. <laughs> Thank you, Calvin. Be before we go, can I? Can you repeat that question? Oh, for sure. If, if yeah, if you ever want me to repeat a question, by all means, just either one of you, just please, uh, please go ahead. Uh, so, Steve, the question is, uh, if elected, how would you propose better engaging residents of the county in the formal budget process, as well as increased public consultation for other decisions made by council? Um, maybe more situations like this, talking to people. Um, um, you know what? I really don't know the answer to that question. How it would be better? Social media, of course, would be a good thing. Um, radio, uh, we, we have to get the people more involved. Um, I really, that's about all I can think of. You bet, no problem. Thank you, Steve. Okay, well, we're gonna start with you, Steve, on this next round. Uh, we're gonna just rotate it through. And uh, the question is, uh, public-private partnerships provide an opportunity to build needed infrastructure while allowing the private sector to help get the best deal possible. If elected, are you in favor of working with elected colleagues to engage the private sector to participate in building major infrastructure in our region? Yes, uh, most definitely. We, have, we need that. We need it for a tax base. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Uh, same question to you, Calvin. No, I believe that uh, the private sector is very important when it comes to uh, dealing with things like our infrastructure. The issue when we have that, though, is most of the time when a certain company puts in infrastructure, such as in internet, cell phone, etc., then they have a monopoly on that for however many years before everybody else can use that same product because they've put out the outlay to begin with. The issue with that is sometimes you're stuck with only one provider. So we need to do something uh, as a group, whether we have, I say, TELUS and Rogers come in, or whether we have Grand Prairie Networks or it, another company, for example, and say, okay, we have so many years you're gonna do this, but you have to provide this level of service. Okay. That's what I believe. Okay, thank you, Kelvin. Okay, well, and we'll start with you again, Kelvin, on this next, uh, next round of questions. Uh, transportation plays a key role in the county uh, what are your views on paving of current gravel roads in rural areas? I think uh, pavement is a fantastic idea on a lot of the roads. The biggest thing we need to do though first is to build up the roads that we are going to pave. Don't just build a road, pave it the next year and have it go to crap. Excuse my language. But what we need to do is build up the roads, have them packed, have them used, and then uh, judging on the traffic and what is necessary, then move on to pavement. Because once the road has been packed sufficiently by the traffic and the people using it, then uh, pavement will, seems to last a lot longer, such as the Emerson Trail. Okay. Thank you, Kelvin. Uh, and same question to you, Steve. Um, yes, I, I'm, I'm all for paving roads. I think we have to be a little we have to decide what, which roads are, are, uh, need to be paved first. Um, also, all these subdivisions that they're building nowadays, I, I would 
love to see that the developer paves all those roads so the county isn't going to have to look after that later, which we have a bunch right now that all the, all the voters would like it, like it uh, paved and it's concerns we're going to have to look into. Good. Thank you, Steve. Okay, and we'll start this next round off with you uh, as well, Steve. Uh, regional planning brings together multiple communities and areas to find projects that improve our region. How would you propose to work with other municipalities, including the city, to prioritize and pursue projects that are focused on improving economic outcomes for our region? Well, number one, we're going to have to get along with the city. Uh, um, we'd be, I'd be looking uh, to represent the county of Grand Prairie in the best interests. Um, but yeah, we're, we're definitely going to have to get along with, this, with the city and share tax bases for projects. And as long as it benefits the county, great. Excellent. Thank you, Steve. And uh, Calvin, same question. I agree with Steve. Of course, we're going to have to get along with uh, both towns, city, and uh, the neighboring uh, counties as well. The biggest thing is once we get going is to know what we're going to have for uh, tourism or other economic benefits, whether it's for us or for the city or for, say, uh, the surrounding towns, whether it's Beaver Lodge, Saxmith, Wembley. As at the end of the day, that's where we all live. That's where we all go for groceries. That's where we all go for hockey, et cetera. And having a, one center like Grand Prairie and everybody coming in is not feasible. We have to have that spread out because we're a large county. Thank you, Calvin. Okay, and we'll start this next round with you, Calvin, as well. And the question is, if elected, how would you strive to ensure government transparency in the decisions made by county council? Well, I think uh, as a council, everything should be uh, recorded and open to the public, which I'm sure it is now, but just more accessible. And what I mean by that is when somebody calls in and says, what is going on vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, uh, uh, horseback riding or hockey or etc. in my area, they can be sent to a link and get all the information. And if they want to know what's going on in each uh, division, if, if with each uh, member, it should be easily accessed. Thank you, Calvin. Uh, Steve, same question. Um, I think the county's got the right idea. They uh, that the county council meetings. Um, people are allowed in. Um, they, they have a website. They announce uh, different projects, different things that are going on. Um, I mean, it always could be improved. Uh, newspaper would be great. Uh, I guess we'll... Uh, that's about it. Good. Thank you, Steve. And uh, last question uh, for you guys, and we're going to start this one with you, Steve. Uh, if elected, what would you propose to improve enforcement of crime in rural areas? Um, I think we're going to have to talk again with the city and the RCMP, a little more patrolling in the county. Um, we have to... Uh, uh, something that I've been talking to uh, the Rural Crime Watch guys, and about uh, Lake Catch, a app that they're using, and it connects everybody in uh, Alberta, and not just, uh, mo most of these subdivisions have their own a little um, Facebook page that they talk, something's going on, but this would connect all of them, and uh, I think that would really help. Thank you, Steve. Same question to you, Calvin. I think, uh, one of the big problems that we have is that uh, 911 is uh, sent to Edmonton. Most people in Edmonton don't have a clue what we're talking about. When I let's say I've called in, I know my neighbors have called in, there's a house on fire, right? Where are you at? I say, well, we're between Wembley and Beaver Lodge. Okay, and then they're looking on a map trying to figure out where you are. The county addresses don't make any sense to them. It's one thing after another. And you're trying to give directions to somebody that really doesn't know what's going on. So you end up hanging up, calling Beaver Lodge directly, <laughs> and talking to somebody there who's from the area. But it's good luck 
So what we need to do is end up having to someplace, because when you're having an emergency, the last thing you want to do is have to explain yourself to somebody who doesn't know the area. Good. Okay. Thank you, Calvin. All right. Well, that uh, concludes our question period. Uh, again, we're going to have one minute for closing comments. Uh, and we did the random draw uh, earlier. And uh, uh, with that, we are going to be starting with uh, Steve for uh, closing comments. You have one minute. Uh, so I'm uh, like I say I'm uh, running for county council. I would really and uh, really like your votes, um, whether you vote for me or Calvin uh, or Marissa. Uh, I would really uh, I hope to see you guys out there. We need a turnout. Um, see you out there. Thank you, Steve and Calvin. Well. Thanks for coming out, Steve. I think this was a lot of fun. Uh, I wish all three of us were here tonight, but that's all right. That happens. Please come out and vote. That's the number one thing. I think uh, everyone should come out. Let us hear your voice. See what's going on. Uh, please, I'd like your vote, but like I say, any vote is a good vote. That means you've been out and you've done your uh, county responsibility, which is fantastic. And I'd like to say thank you for having us this is a great night good excellent thank you calvin and thank you guys for coming out tonight calvin maple steve zimmerman your candidates for division four uh thank you guys again for putting your names forward we wish you all the best on october 18th and, thanks for uh, having us thank you well good evening and uh, we're going to be introducing our candidates for division five in alphabetical order uh, we have Kevin Jingles, who was unable to make it here this evening, uh, Robert Hill, who also couldn't join us, and Bob Marshall. Welcome, Bob. And we're going to be opening it up with uh, opening remarks, and we're going to have one minute uh, for opening, and then some questions, and then one minute for close, and uh, we'll turn it over to you, Bob, for your one minute of opening remarks. Thank you. So good evening. My name is Bob Marshall. I'm the current county councillor for Division 5. I feel that during my past eight years as county councillor, I have established relationships and contacts in the community and at various levels of government that will help me continue to deal with issues that impact our county residents. Roads continue to be a significant issue for residents and I will continue to work with our public works department, industry to improve our roads. I feel that there's an opportunity for the county to partner with industry in certain locations to upgrade our road infrastructure. I believe our area deserves a new health facility to replace the existing Beaver Lodge Hospital. I will continue to be a strong advocate for getting a new health facility in Beaver Lodge. Crime is an issue in the West County as well, and as a result, I supported hiring two additional RCMP officers to work out of the Beaver Lodge detachment. Thank you, and please vote Bob Marshall on October 18th. Thank you, Bob. And with that, we're going to dive right into the question period. And uh, the first question that we'll have for you is, if elected, how would you propose county residents be made better aware of the efforts by local leaders to improve services on an ongoing basis and allow for public participation and feedback? Well, currently we have a Facebook page, Twitter, uh, and also we have the information for our county councillors that are, is on the website. And it's up to the county councillor to get out there and meet the public and there's a significant number of events that happen throughout the year where you can engage with the residents to let them know uh, how to contact you and also uh, find out what their issues are so there's lots of opportunities now and i believe we are using them to the best of our ability thank you bob uh, next question for you. Uh, Public-private partnerships provide an opportunity to build needed infrastructure while allowing the private sector to help get the best deal possible. If elected, are you in favor of working with elected colleagues to engage the private sector to participate in building major infrastructure in our region? Actually, yes, I am. And that was one of the things I have uh, pushed within the county council. And one of the road infrastructure projects we engaged with, Oventive, uh, going into one of their multi-pad well sites. Uh, it was county dollars as well as industry dollars. And I'm currently working with industry on potentially some other infrastructure road improvements that would be a joint county uh, industry partnership. Good. Thank you, Bob. 
Uh, next question, developing, attracting, and retaining skills to support business growth in our community is an important priority for our chamber members. How would you work with the business community to attract and retain talent in our region? Our economic development part, department is actually spearheading the business retention and education uh, initiative. So they're working with that. It's educating people and also we were engaging with the uh, Grand Prairie Regional College, which I'm not sure what the new name is going to be yet. I don't think they've chosen that yet, but whatever we can do to support that, I know we've advocated for them to make sure that the programs we have are targeted to the industry and the jobs that are required in our region, which is probably primarily towards our, more towards the trades side of things because I know there's a significant number of individuals that are re hitting retirement age and we are probably going to be short on that skill set. Thank you, Bob. Uh, next question. Uh, regional planning brings together multiple communities and areas to find projects that improve our region. How would you propose to work with other municipalities, including the city, to prioritize and pursue projects that are focused on improving economic outcomes for our region? With that, again, it's our economic development department, department within the county that is working on those projects, bringing them in. We have also set up uh, relationships with our smaller municipalities within the county borders uh, to work at what they can do to uh, increase their industry presence and tax base as well. I mean, it helps municipalities for, to have an industrial tax base or a commercial tax base as well. Um, that is more, like I say, within the administrative role and whatever we can do at a council level to support that. We're more about the policy and at a higher level than getting into the meat of it. Thank you, Bob. All right. Uh, next question. In what industries do you see the greatest potential for support by the county? Uh, good question. I, I have to focus on Division 5, and that's primarily with the oil activity, oil and gas activity that we have, the amount of wells that are being drilled currently. We have seen a significant uptick with uh, the province providing a royalty holiday on linear uh, the, and the cancellation of the well drilling tax. We have seen more activity in Division 4 and Division 5 with well drilling in this year versus probably the last four combined, just looking at the amount of wells that have been sputtered. So it's supporting them and trying to minimize the impact that industry is having on our residents in the process. Good. Thank you, Bob, for that. Um, and last question, how would you improve and promote Indigenous relationships? Currently, we are working with uh, Horse Lake, or we have in the past, and I still believe we have a relationship with them around their fire department training and helping them out with that. I know that was initiated probably six years ago, and I think we have an ongoing uh, commitment to help them out with their fire department. Uh, we engage with them whenever possible. Uh, myself, as the chair of the Water North Coalition, we are reaching out to First Nations around water and wastewater um, on their sites because I know that is an issue within the First Nations community. Uh, I know Horse Lake has also got a brand new water treatment plant, so anything we can do to help with their training. And with the Water North Coalition, there is a lot of information that they could access to help get the training and maintain creditation for their operators. Thank you, Bob. And that, uh, that concludes our questions uh, for this evening. I uh, will now uh, turn it over to you for one minute of close. Thank you. So in closing, I'd like to say that in my past eight years as County Councillor for Division 5, it has given me the experience to understand how things work and how things are done at the county level and the municipal level and how to affect change as well. I have been available to listen and assist people in Division 5 with their issues and if I don't know the answer, I will find out for people and get back to them or direct them to the appropriate county staff personnel. I know I can continue to be a strong voice for the residents of Division 5. So on October 18th, please vote for Bob Marshall. Thank you, Bob.
So your Division 5 uh, candidates, Kevin Jingles, Robert Hill, and Bob Marshall, uh, thank you guys for putting your name forward and uh, wish you all the best on uh, October 18th. Thank, thank you. you. Welcome, and now to introduce the, are your candidates for Division 8 in alphabetical order, Karen Roswald and Cheryl Van Eerden. Welcome this evening, and thank you for coming. Uh, we'll have our opening remarks, which were picked by random draw here just before you uh, showed up uh, this evening, and we're going to open. Uh, you have one minute, remember, with the yellow flag and then the red. Uh, one minute for your opening, and we're going to start with Karen. Thank you, Larry. Good evening, everyone. Thank you to the Grand Prairie and District Chamber of Commerce for facilitating this forum. And also thank you to all the candidates for putting their names forward for Municipal Council. And a little side note, I just want to say happy Teacher Day, World Teacher Day. Uh, the teachers have done an amazing job over the last couple years, and it's so important to show our appreciation to them. I am so very fortunate that all my children and grandchildren farm and reside in the County of Grand Prairie. My husband and I actively farm with our son and his family near La Glace on our 100 plus year farm. So my heart and soul is in this county. I get asked regularly what we do at the council table. Well, the county, at the county council table is a place for governance, advocacy and direction setting. I have the experience, knowledge and dedication to hit the ground running with a council that is going to have a significant turnover this year. Thank you and I look forward to your questions. Thank you, Karen and Cheryl. Hi, my name is Cheryl Van Eerden. Thank you for having me tonight. Um, I, my husband and I have um, farmed in, in La Glace for 40 years and um, we raised our three children there and we now have three grandchildren that live out on the farm with us. Um, over the years, I've been an active member of the community taking part in the various businesses and volunteer boards. I, I've served, served as a member of the board of directors for the local Horizon Credit Union for 17 years, which is now Vision Credit Union. Um, I was a member of the La, La Glace Egg Society for three years and a member of the La Glace Fire Department for 13 years, 10 of those as a station captain. I am currently in my 15th year as a full-time bus driver for Peace Wapiti. And I also spent about six years on uh, the Health Advisory Committee for AHS. And that's, that's your minute. <laughs> Sorry, thank you though. Thank you, Cheryl. Uh, with that, we'll dive right into our question period. And remember, you have 45 seconds and the same with the yellow and the red carts. And, uh, questions we're going to start in alphabetical order so we'll, we'll start this one off with Karen and uh, the question is if elected how would you pr propose better engaging residents of the county in the formal budget process as well as increased public consultation for other decisions made by council thank you Larry it's a great question it's important that we always have that consultation with our community um, I've always had an open door policy uh, I'm always willing to listen to what our residents have to say. It is uh, not always a positive experience because they don't always get what they want, but unfortunately it is what it is with governance. Uh, it's important that um, we always have public hearings, so they are always available to come into our hearings as well. And uh, that is just engage them, get out amongst the community and see what people have to say. Thanks, Larry. Thank you, Karen. And Cheryl. Well, I think uh, nowadays went with uh, better communication. We have email and I, my cell phone works well. We, there's uh, better opportunities, better ways to communicate um, with the members of the community that have concerns. Um, I also think that when you get out and meet people in, in different functions, then uh, you can also get a feel for the community and what, what issues that they feel is imp important. So that's pretty much all I have. Yep. Thank you, Cheryl. Okay, we'll uh, 
We'll reverse the order here. We'll start this one off with, uh, with, uh, with you, Cheryl. Okay. And the question is, uh, developing, attracting, and retaining skills to support business growth in our community is an important priority for our chamber members. How would you work with the business community to attract and retain talent in our region? Well, I believe that um, your employees are your greatest asset, and, and I feel when, when you treat employees with respect and dignity, they give you um, more than, than you ask of them. And so with that philosophy, I think that's uh, how I would encourage businesses to treat their employees and, um, and then grow them sometimes within the organization and have a um, uh, sometimes in-house training to, to um, fill the positions that you need in the future, you know, build it within is another uh, good way to do it. Thank you, Cheryl. And Karen. Thanks, Larry. That's a great question. Um, economic development is, is crucial for our county. Uh, we try to grow from uh, a natural growth rather than increase taxes, and that is how we can build a base within our area. Uh, the county has, through our economic development department, a business network, uh, which is run through um, the chamber as part of it, I think, as well as the... Um, uh, I forget, the one Holly Sorgan's with, <laughs> her, her group, sorry, I forget the name off the top of my head, but it's important that we encourage them, we work with them to uh, have the lower taxes than other places, we work with them to make sure that they have the opportunity for the courses and sessions that they need to survive. Thank you, Karen. Okay, and now we'll, we'll start this round with you, Karen. Yep. And the question is, uh, regional planning brings together multiple communities and areas to find projects that improve our region. How would you propose to work with other municipalities, including the city, to prioritize and pursue projects that are focused on improving economic outcomes for our region? Okay. Thank you, Larry. Uh, absolutely. Regional collaboration is so crucial because if one community doesn't survive, then none of them will. It's important that we grow our businesses together. Um, we do have our intermunicipal collaboration frameworks that we are working with to encourage the uh, growth within the areas. Um, our, we need to encourage our teams and I'm hoping that with a new council that we'll be able to have a little bit more collaboration. It is so important that we have that and it is, it is um, it's something that we're working on and I think we'll continue to do so as we go forward. Thank you, Karen. And Cheryl. Um, yeah, I, I believe that um, collaboration is definitely important. I think um, bringing honesty and, and integrity to the table is also an important part of it. And feeling like um, you're re respectful of one another and different opinions. And then you can work together feeling confident that um, you have trust in the other, in each other, and so they can move forward in a productive way. So, um, yeah, that's kind of how I see it. Thank you, Cheryl. All right, we'll start this, uh, the next round with, uh, with you, Cheryl. And the question is, what are your thoughts on continued funding facility for, for facilities such as uh, the Dinosaur Museum and Evergreen Park? That's, that's a good question. Um, I think we, ha we have the facility now and we have to make the most of what we have. I, I think it's, it has been a challenge to get people in the, in the door in a, in a regular way. I think um, myself, I think that they could add something that would draw people back um, for new things all the time, it, whether it be a big uh, movie, um, I forget what you call them, but one of those surround or big screen things, you know, where they have those movies and stuff that people want to come back and see that again and it brings people in. So 
you know, programs that, or projects that uh, constantly change and bring people back. Thank you, Cheryl. Uh, and Karen. Thank you, Larry. Uh, that's actually something I heard quite regularly the first time I was out campaigning is about the Dino Museum and, uh, and that type of thing. And it's important now, the money's been spent, and it's, it's crucial that we work on making them sustainable. It's been, uh, it's been improving the last couple of years. Uh, we have them, if it hadn't been for COVID, I think uh, the Dino Museum has a fabulous executive director now, and she is so engaged in trying new things, and they are working towards that sustainability. And Evergreen Park, because of COVID, everything's kind of been an issue for the last few years, but they are growing their business, they're growing what they do in their facilities, and that will make them sustainable at some point. Thank you, Karen. Okay, we'll start the next round with you, uh, Karen, as well. Uh, if, if elected, how would you strive to ensure government transparency in the decisions made by County Council? Thank you. That's a great question. Uh, we've always tried to be transparent. We have our public meetings, our chambers are always open for anybody to come and visit um, and, and see what's going on. It, we don't have uh, backdoor rooms as we don't have the same kind of committee meetings. Our committee meetings are wide open as well. It's so important that our residents feel that they have the opportunity to talk to anybody that they want to and know what's going on. It's important that they have the, um, a say in what's going on. And it, we've worked on that a lot. Um, through COVID, we've had the live streaming so anybody can watch and we will continue to have a public forum so that anybody can come anytime. Good, thank you, Karen. Cheryl, same question. Um, I, I believe that the, the county needs work on their transparency. I, I believe that they um, also need to follow policy that they haven't uh, been doing in the past. And um, I think it's created some problems. And uh, their live streaming also, I've, I've tried to, you know, look, follow along on that, but I can't, it doesn't work like if there's a way they can improve it so you can actually see what's going on because it hasn't worked for me. But um, I, I do feel like they have a, a big, uh, they have a big problem with um, following policy and um, being held accountable for the things that they do. Thank you, Cheryl. And uh, last question. So in this one, we'll start with you, Cheryl. Uh, in what industries do you see the greatest potential for support by the county? Agriculture is one of the biggest ones. I think that it, um, it's the backbone of our uh, county. Uh, oil and gas also it plays a big part. Um, that has had its challenges in the last few years, but we need to continue to work to make things work better in that area in, in government, you know, policies and things like that and work with the federal government. Um, and the, the small businesses, uh, the mom and pop shops need to be supported and, and allowed to thrive by uh, policies that support them also. So um, that's kind of how I see it. Good. Thank you, Cheryl. And Karen, same question. Thank you. Um, we have a fabulous, right now, we have a fabulous agricultural community. As Cheryl said, it is the backbone of our, our region. Uh, we also have a thriving energy industry. Our forestry is, is not as good because we don't have the same kind of trees that some place like Greenview or Saddle Hills and some of those do. But I think our biggest growth potential is in our tourism industry and partnering with our our nonprofits and our community groups and our Dino Museum and the Evergreen Park to encourage uh, the small group, small organizations, the food trucks, the, the small businesses. Without the small businesses, we don't have anything, but we need, we need to have the tourism, we need to have forestry. Without the forestry tourism, we don't have small business either. So it's encouraging to keep them going. Good, thank you, Karen. 
All right, now we're, that brings us, uh, that's, we made it through the question period, so now we just have our closing remarks, and we're going to reverse the order uh, for closing. So Cheryl, we'll start with you. Remember, you have one minute and uh, the yellow card and then the, uh, the red card when you're done with your one minute. Okay. So take it away, Cheryl, whenever okay. you're ready. Um, there is a mindset that says, I have rights, and another one that says, I have obligations. Instead of thinking I'm born, born with rights, I choose to think that I'm born with obligations to, to serve past, present, and future generations. I believe in fairness, honesty, and integrity. In making decisions, I ask myself, is the common good adequately served? This is what I hope to bring to my role of elected to county council. Things I hope to improve at the county, better to have them be better at fulfilling obligations, more timely responses to requests of legitimate concerns, dealing more fairly with county residents, more diligence in researching new projects, listening to residents' concerns and asking their opinions, advocating for volunteer firefighters that now don't have any representation, making mental health a pr pr priority for employees, and also to change the county's uh, policy in that uh, volunteer firefighters are not considered employees. Time's up. Thank you, Cheryl. And Karen. Thank you, Larry. I originally ran for council because I'd been an avid volunteer in the community and felt that running for council was the next step to be able to give back to the community. Some of the organizations I've been involved with, I was past chair of the Beaver Lodge and District Rural Crime Watch, past chair of the Suicide Prevention Resource Center, I've been a member of the Ag Society, including implementing and building, or building and implementing their policy and procedure manual. I've been involved in 4-H. 30 years I've been involved with, uh, as caretaker for the Northfield Cemetery. I continue to volunteer, including being awarded Outstanding Volunteer Award in 2020. I have a passion for our community and a drive to see our community thrive. It is crucial to work with our community groups and nonprofits to enable them to be successful and sustainable. I am very proud of the work I have achieved in, in building connections I've, across the province. Uh, through those connections, I've been involved, invited to the table to consult with the Minister of Agriculture on Bill 26, the Freedom, Farm Freedom and Safety Bill. I've been at the table with Minister of Community Services, Minister of Agriculture, uh, Education, and so forth. It's, those connections are crucial. So. Thank you, Karen. And uh, we have uh, Cheryl Van Eerden and uh, Karen Roosevelt, your candidates for Division 8, and we wish you all the best on October 18th. Thank you for coming out this evening, and again, all the best. Thank you, Larry. I appreciate your guys' support. No Thank problem. you very much. Well, good evening. And introducing our candidates for Division 9 in alphabetical order, Pam Badger, uh, Dwayne Badry, who couldn't make it here this evening, uh, Bob Krennic, and Cheryl Renhart. And uh, with that, we're going to start with opening remarks, and we had a random draw here just a while ago. Uh, and uh, the order that we're going to start with opening remarks, and uh, keep in mind you have one minute for your opening remarks, is uh, Cheryl Renhart. Oh, well, good evening. <laughs> uh, to me, there's much more to being a councillor than just convincing you in a month to vote for me. It is everything I have done over the years to prepare and earn my place at the council table through knowledge, education, and experience. As manager of legislative services at the County of Grand Prairie for over 10 years, I have gained massive knowledge base and a tremendous amount of experience at different levels of government and through writing policies and bylaws as directed by council of the day and implementing them. I have university and college education, not only in municipal government, but in all levels of government, along with law and accounting. I took early retirement to further prepare myself for the position without distraction and on a full-time basis. The residents of Division 9 and the county as a whole uh, need a representation that knows what they're doing from the first moment they take their oath as council in office. You don't have to wait four years for me to learn the ropes and figure out what my job is. I'm ready to go now. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. And uh, next up, we're gonna have uh, Pam Badger. 
Thank you for having me. Um, thank you to the Chamber of Commerce and everybody for having us here today for this forum. I'm grateful for the uh, opportunity to speak about important subjects. Um, I'm Pam and I've been in the Teepee Creek area since 2009. Um, I most recently um, was part of the Teepee Creek Stampede Association. I was the chairperson to head up building the indoor riding arena in Teepee Creek. Um, as well as being the secretary. I um, birthed two children during that time, and it was all for the fun and games of it. I didn't get paid a dime, and it was the best time of my life. So what I'd like to do for the people of the county is listen and see what everybody else thinks that we need and implement it. And I am a doer. I do things, and I get things done. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pam. I am Bob. Good evening, my name is Bob Krennick. I'm seeking the position of County Councillor in Division 9. I'm a third generation farmer. I've raised our family on the site for over 50 years. My wife Donna and I have raised two children in the community. Both children have attended university and after finishing their education, have returned to the area to live and raise their children. <coughs> Excuse me. We have always valued family and community. I have chosen to run as a candidate. I believe with my experience watching the division's growth over my life, I'll provide a strong voice for each and every constituent. I believe in a safe, prosperous county that is fiscally responsible. A county where businesses are happy to conduct their business. A county should maintain its roads, schools, fire stations, and appropriate equipment. It is my belief that new developments in the form of acreages, subdivisions, along with industrial development are vital parts in keeping our county strong. However, such developments must take into consideration the impact on the agricultural sector and rural community now and in the future. Our county, we are extremely lucky to have such a vast amount of green area to enjoy with our families, whether used for horseback riding, quadding, hiking, etc. I look forward to being your voice for the Division 9. I will be a dedicated and attentive representative for the Division's constituents and look forward to hearing from you. Thank you, Bob Krennick. All right, with that, we'll roll right into question period. And uh, we're gonna uh, be going in alphabetical order and then I'll stagger them as we go through that so that it rotates who answers the question first. Uh, so Pam, we're gonna be starting with you on this question. And the first question directed is, uh, if elected, how would you propose county residents be made better aware of the efforts by local leaders to improve services on an ongoing basis and allow for public participation and feedback? While I believe that the county website is a really good resource and social media is a really good resource, it's we need to get word out there a little bit better. Not everybody's on social media, not everybody's on a website seeking information. So the information needs to be provided to constituents via, I know we do letters, but not everybody gets their mail right away. So we need to make sure that um, maybe people in the affected area get known, uh, are, are, are informed by maybe door-to-door -door knocking, and I know that's a lot of manpower, but the people involved need to know, so they absolutely have to have the information available. Thank you, Pam. Uh, Bob, same question. Can you repeat the question, please? Yes, <coughs> no, no problem. If elected, how would you propose county residents be, ba be made better aware of the efforts by local leaders to improve services on an ongoing basis and allow for public participation and feedback? I believe that the, the internet service uh, is very unreliable in, the, in some senses, and yet that is probably the most direct uh, approach to getting our information across from the county, based upon the fact that uh, almost everyone uses it now, young and old, and most people have access to it. Other than that, the mail out flyers, they, they work, but again, sometimes our mail service, we don't have the options of, of maybe getting our mail due to some security breaches in the mailboxes these days, unfortunately. Other than that, I, I think that uh, radio ads are also a very important and vital part of how to get your, your messages across from the county. Radio is a big, big communication uh, identifier. Everyone listens to the radio at some point. I'm sure that would help a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. And Cheryl. Um, my thoughts are that there, with the county currently, there is a lack of um, public consultation, especially with large issues such as budgeting and strategic planning. They don't really ask. 
the residents of the county for any kind of feedback at all. The residents should be offered the option to give feedback and the, in many years I've worked for the county, they've never done one plebiscite, which is a question that's asked of the ratepayers, it gives them time to respond. Um, and we've done very little in town hall meetings. Uh, you gotta get the word out to the residents, you figure it out, you get it out, and there's a lack of, there's a lack on council's part of wanting to get that information out and we just need to do that better. Um, we have a public participation policy Sorry, in place. Sorry, that's your time. 45 seconds on your answers, please. Thank you. Oh, okay. That's okay. Uh, okay, we're going to move on to the next question. And we're uh, going to stagger the order, so we'll be starting with you, with you Bob, on this question. Uh, Public-private partnerships provide an opportunity to develop needed infrastructure while allowing the private sector to help get the best deal possible. If elected, are you in favor of working with elected colleagues to engage the private sector to participate in building major infrastructure in our region? Yes, I think it's very important that we engage with both private and commercial. We, if we do not combine the two, it's pretty hard to go forward because there's very, very different uh, opinions and to get it to one stage where you're, <clears throat> you're traveling through the private sector, they also have wants and needs and the, the commercial sector also is between the two, they have to go and coincide. They both stand to benefit by being together and working as, as one. If you work individually, so many things will be missed in the communities. We need them both. Thank you, Bob. Cheryl, same question. Um, so, yes, I agree. We should be able to make those partnerships with private and in industry to, um, it's, it's a win-win for everybody. But the problem is, is that you got the trade agreement in place, which requires you under law to do the tendering process and the RFPs, and it cannot just go to the region for local. It has to go across Canada. So for that to be addressed, and it's been a challenge. They've tried to work on this a long time. For that to be addressed, they need to bring those parties back to the table and renegotiate that, that agreement and work the um, RFPs and tenders in a way that local is given first dibs versus lowest price. Good, thank you, Cheryl. And Pam, same question. I agree with both of the other um, candidates that we do need to find a compromise between county and private sector, commercial sector. We all need to work together. We all live here, we all work here, we all are raising our families here um, for the bulk of the infrastructure, whether it's um, facilities, roads, whatever needs to be done. I agree 100%. Um, the treaty that was mentioned by Cheryl definitely needs to be revamped. I do believe that it needs to um, incorporate more local, uh, more local participation um, from different companies and make sure that we um, make sure that we just all work together because that's it only benefits the rest of us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Pam. All right, we'll be starting this order with Cheryl. Uh, the question is, uh, transportation plays a key role in the county. What are your views on paving of current gravel roads in rural areas? <laughs> well, that's a, a very popular question and I can say for the last two weeks I've gotten that question every day. Um, the county has paved roads that lead nowhere. Um, why does council, why do, why do council do this? Why is it even recommended? I think they need to be more concerned about maintaining their current infrastructure and doing more road maintenance than spending more than a million dollars a mile on pavement that would also need to be maintained and become part of the capital assets. Um, it's called country living. Gravel roads are part of that. And of course there are times when you need the pavement it needs to be assessed at the time, but you just don't pave everything going anywhere. And we do have a ma transportation master plan that's in place that should be guiding us. Thank you, Cheryl. Pam, same question. Um, I'm all about country living. I live on a gravel road. I've driven on gravel roads my whole life. Um, if you don't want to live on a gravel road, don't move to the country. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. Some areas, yes, do need some pavement. Um, other people put the calcium on their part of the gravel road so that it reduces dust. 
that's probably a little bit more cost efficient plan than paving every gravel road in the county, which I don't think is fiscally feasible or fiscally responsible. So let's keep most of our gravel gravel. Let's take the roads on a case by case basis and then um, potentially maybe pave some more, but I don't think that we need more paved roads. Thank you, Pam. And Bob, same question. Uh, in regards to gravel and paving, I take a little different stance in the sense that I'm, I'm not opposed to paving some of the roads. Some of them have such a high traffic count and, the, and the, uh, the, the maintenance on the road has just become unbearable to, to cost, as far as I can understand, as talking to some of the road maintenance crews and things, it's just it's over and over. I, I do think that some of these high volume uh, traffic roads, they do need to be paved and that would be more efficient and probably a better use of money than continually grading. Pouring gravel, regraveling, you know, it just goes on and on and on. The road that was rebuilt that I know of that they wanted to repave, it's just falling apart. It's just too much traffic to handle on gravel. So I am, I believe some paving does need to be done. Thank you, Bob. Okay, we're starting back at the, uh, with Pam on this mm -hmm. question. Uh, regional planning brings together multiple communities and areas to find projects that improve our region. How would you propose to work with other municipalities, including the city, to prioritize and pursue projects that are focused on improving economic outcomes for our region? Lots of research. I know a lot about research when it comes to building um, public facilities like the indoor riding arena and TB Creek. Um, that was a lot of research and planning and everything by not just myself. We had a huge committee and we all played a different part in it and each municipality would bring something different to the table, a different viewpoint, a different um, budget would be brought to the table by each municipality. So I think that it's important that we all work together, especially when that facility or that infrastructure would benefit so many people in, in our county or in multiple counties for that matter. Thank you, Pam. Uh, Bob, same question to you. Can you just repeat that again? So uh, Yeah, for sure. Uh, regional planning brings together multiple communities and areas to find projects that improve our region. How would you propose to work with other municipalities, including the city, to prioritize and pursue projects that are focused on improving economic outcomes for our region? I think that uh, uh, the city and all municipalities must work together. Uh, there's such a benefit when two can combine their efforts. Uh, there's numerous places in Grand Prairie, for example, that combine with the county of Grand Prairie that they share share sort of the usage of uh, different facilities. It brings in tons of opportunity for people to take advantage, and it takes in a lot of uh, brings in a lot of extra income or financial assistance to lots of places that need it. It's a great win-win for both the county and the city as we share and go forward. All municipalities should be more than happy to share their their prosperity with each other. Thank you, Bob. Thanks. Cheryl. So <clears throat> regionalization and collaboration are two separate issues. Um, I want the county to remain the county and keep its own autonomy, but I do agree with and believe that we should share different assets and services to set groundwork for the collaboration. Um, through the last three years or so, uh, all the municipalities in Alberta have had to go through what's considered what's called ICFs, which is Intermunicipal Collaborative Frameworks. And they've actually had the talks, bring it out, all the things that come to the table, what they can share, uh, assets, transportation, everything. And those projects are all worked out. The only one that the county's still having to uh, deal with is the city, and it's gone to arbitration. Thank you, Cheryl. All right, we'll start this round uh, with you, Bob. And the question is, if elected, what would you propose to improve enforcement of crime in rural areas? Um, it is a big issue in our area, as well as many other ones in the, in the division, I know for sure, and, and in all of the county. We need to try to find a way to have more uh, um, county patrol uh, services and I just every every town needs it I know that there's been a lot of vandalism and theft and everything right close to us and Teepee Creek has been really bad I think that we do really need to find a way to get more service personnel to help us that way we need we need to push for more county officers and and patrol thank you Bob 
Uh, Cheryl, same question. So in the County Grand Prairie, we have a lack of uh, enforcement services and bylaw. There's no doubt about it. Uh, the county uh, does not have enough enforcement officers. They're very reactive, not proactive. You, up in the division, you rarely see a uh, enforcement bylaw RCMP. They're reactive. They only come when they have to do calls. And they don't necessarily come when there's calls. You have to go downtown and make a report. Um, I, the, the, the enforcement services department of the county works extremely well with the RCMP and they are on the right track. They have everything they need. They don't have staff. They have programs and they have um, a couple of programs in place that are really good, Rural Crime Watch, uh, the Lightning Program, but they need more staff. And provincially, they got, they, oh sorry, they have to redo the policing model. Um, that's simply all there is. Sorry, thank you. And Pam, last question. Same question, sorry. I do believe that there is a uh, lack when it comes to enforcement services, um, especially in the rural areas. Uh, working with the RCMP and the enforcement services um, with the TP Creek Stampede and the TP Creek PBR Classic, um, I know firsthand their, um, their struggle with, with, uh, with rural crime. And I mean, I've been down the road from lots of different um, crime that's happened in our area. I'm part of the Rural Crime Watch Association. And I just, I know that they are lacking staff. They are lacking uh, the resource to get the staff. So while I don't really want to throw a ton of money at it, I think that might be the only way to um, solve this problem. Thank you, Pam. All right, we're, we're already down to our last question. So. Uh, and this round will start with Cheryl. Uh, how would you improve and promote Indigenous relationships? They're very much in the media now, which they should have been before. It took a horrible tragedy to come to light throughout Canada for them to realize what the Indigenous peoples have had to go through throughout the years. Um, having the day of reconciliation, I spent it actually, our family actually spent it watching a documentary. Council has had uh, First Nations come to do a smudging. We need to put them more in the light to teach us more of their ways since the past has been so blatantly pushing our ways on the people that were originally here indigenous. So I would the little red flags up, I have to stop talking. <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl. He's just doing what he has to do. <laughs> um, Pam, same question. Um, I believe that, uh, I personally, from my involvement with the TP Creek School, they have done an amazing job of bringing in um, and recognizing their, um, their traditions, um, being in, in TP Creek, like we've, we have a giant teepee in the middle of our rodeo grounds to recognize tradition and the old ways. And we were actually going to hold one of their powwows out at Teepee Creek because they needed a, an area, but um, then they end up canceling at the last minute finding a different facility. But the important thing is, is that the discussion is open. We need to open the discussion more. And now that unfortunately with the tragedies, that we def definitely just need to open the discussion more. Sorry. <laughs> it's such a big topic. It's, it's such a big topic. You can't just yeah. limit it to 45 seconds. <laughs> For sure. Thank you, Pam. Uh, Bob, same question. Yes. I went to the Day of and Reconciliation, uh, the walk, and it was a very um, enlightening for me, a very enlightening thing to do. I can honestly say that, that more inclusive for them and whatever else. The people that I saw there, it was amazing to see everyone come together and, and sort of feel the pain that has been incurred in the last few years. It's really come to light, especially in, in the last few years. The previous ones exceeding how far back I'm not even aware of, to be quite honest with you. It's been so long. It is, it's a wonderful thing. Uh, if you attended the walk, you'd realize that there's just so much, so much to learn from them and what they're doing and what's happened to them. And honestly, it was a very, eye-opening experience for me. I honestly have to admit that. 
Thank you, Bob. All right, well, that concludes our question period. And now we'll, uh, we're gonna go into our closing remarks. And uh, first through random drive, uh, we've selected who will start. And again, you have one minute, and then the, you'll have the yellow and the red flag. And uh, to start off with closing remarks, we have Pam Badger. Um, thanks for having us here. Um, thanks for the amazing questions. Uh, definitely stumped me a little bit, <laughs> but um, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to answer, and I'm really grateful for this opportunity to even run for this uh, county council spot for Division 9. Um, if I'm elected, then I will definitely put my hard work to the test. Uh, I'm ready to roll up my sleeves and just get to work for you guys because um, I've done it before and I'll do it again and I'll keep doing it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pam. Uh, next up, we have Cheryl. I want to thank the Chamber of Commerce uh, for Grand Prairie and District for the invitation and the, and the opportunity to keep in touch with the residents and our communities where we live. I do really value what the residents have to say and I am prepared for the position of being your counselor over the I've been preparing for it for over the last 10 years. I was not a last, it was not a last minute decision for me. Um, there has been a lot of planning and a lot of preparation on my part to get to this point where I felt I could definitely all in um, without hesitation um, deal with the matters that concern you most and what you want to hear most. I have earned my place at the council table. I hope that you will vote Cheryl Runhart and allow me to start working for you and the residents of Division 9 and the county. The, and I'm prepared to start the day after we are sworn in as councillor. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. And uh, Bob. First of all, I'd like to thank the chamber for having us here and hosting this event. It uh, is a very good thing to do. I, I was uh, questioning a few things with COVID because of the issues that we have surrounding us at this event, but I am very glad that it went over it is and is well taken care of. I look forward to serving the county as a councillor in Division 9. I bring forward fresh ideas and a strong voice and representation for all people in the division. And, uh, and it looks, looks like for generations to come, our county will be very prosperous and very well organized. I think we have a good council coming forward and I really look forward to the opportunity. Thank, Thank you, Bob. All right, well, that, uh, that concludes uh, our, uh, our candidates for Division 9. Uh, for, so for Division 9, we have Pam Badger, uh, Dwayne Badgery, who again couldn't make it here this evening, Bob Krennick, and Cheryl Runhart. Thank you guys so much for coming out tonight, and we wish you guys all the best on October 18th. Thank, Thank you. you again. again. Thank you so much. The Grand Prairie District Chamber of Commerce thanks all candidates for participating in this event. Thank you for letting your name stand for election, which shows a commitment to being part of your continued growth of the county and our region. We encourage everyone eligible to cast your vote in either the advance polls or on election day, October 18th. Please get out and vote, and thank you for listening here this evening. <laughs>